Hi everyone, welcome to our next video about 1.5, which relates to the global world, and we're specifically going to look at exchange rates today. So, making sure that you've got your business guide in front of you, because this will help you keep on track as to where we've been and where we're going. So as you know, we are up to 1.5, and this section can actually be broken down into three subsections. So we had globalization, which was our topic that we did previously. Now we're gonna be looking at the exchange rate calculation, and then the impact of exchange rate changes. So how many gems have you collected? And please make sure you're staying up to date. Um, and go back if you haven't finished your notes on the previous subtopics. So let's just quickly revise the importance and growth of multinationals. So remember that there are benefits of a business becoming a multinational, and there's benefits to a country as well where that multinational company is located. There's also possible drawbacks, so these are things that aren't positive um, and potential barriers. So if you need to review, review these aspects, please go back to our previous lesson so that you can move forward. So just going over them, benefits. Uh, is that we've got a larger market, so we've got access to more customers. And if we've got more customers, we've got more revenue, therefore our profit will increase. We also have an increased access to labor. This means workers, so people are able to access workers that perhaps are in different countries, which could be cheaper. Access to raw materials, so this is how they can make their products cheaper um, and that will lower the cost of production, therefore profit would increase. And economies of scale, this means that by operating on a larger network, we can achieve lower costs. So all of these things help profit at the end of the day. So why businesses want to become multinationals is for the following reasons. They can increase their market share, which means how much of the market do they have compared to competitors. We can also lower our production costs. We can increase our market, so economies of scale and we avoid trade barriers. So these could include tariffs, which is a tax on imports, and government. So government could um, provide grants for different countries. So that could be a benefit to a business becoming a multinational. And then some benefits to the country where the multinational is located. So we call these countries host countries and they could create jobs which will help employment in that country. So an increase in exports and a decrease in imports will help because the multinational will produce goods and services to sell to other countries. So if we've got a big multinational in Qatar, our exports would increase, so that's products being sent to other countries, and our imports would decrease. And this will lead to a wider range of goods and services in that home market, so in that country. There's also an increased investment in that host country um, because of all the technology and the workforce that will need to be trained for that to work. Increased production for that country would lead to higher economic growth overall. So, just pausing this video now, can you define each of the terms that are read? So you can work in a pair. So, workforce. The definition of workforce. 
Then we also have exports, imports, investment, and economic growth. So please add to your flashcards or your glossary or test each other. So make sure you know these definitions. And some potential drawbacks to a country or the economy where that multinational is located. So because they're so powerful, they could take over some of uh, the politics or the authorities. Um, they can create a monopoly. So a monopoly is where there is no comp competition. They own all of the markets. So petrol stations quite often are owned by the same company. Um, and therefore it affects their marketing and the prices. So we can just pay whatever they put the price up to. Um, they can also exploit the natural resources, which is not ideal because once those new, once those non-renewable resources are used, there's no more. So that affects our environment as well. And they could potentially send the profits back to the home nation, therefore the money doesn't stay within that host country. So again, pause the video and in pairs, make sure that you know the definitions to all of these words, adding them to your flashcards or in your glossary. Uh, if you need to create a table about the benefits and drawbacks from these last two slides, you can also do that now, but you should have already done that. So that's what we should have done in class last week. So we'll have a mind map looking at the benefits and the drawbacks of multinational companies to the country where they are. So our next topic looks at exchange rate calculations. So this is 1.5.3. So let's imagine that Sophia lives in the UK and she's going on holiday, holiday to Italy. She has managed to save up 330 pounds of spending money and has gone to the exchange. So there's different places, so the Bureau de Euro exchange is where she can change her money over into euros. So the exchange rate is one pound to 1.57 euros. So how many euros will Sophia get for the money that she saved up? So pausing this video now, figure out how many euros Sophia would get once she exchanges her savings. Remember to write your working down as well. All right, now let's reverse it. So when she returns home, she's got 59 euros left. So, it, so assuming that the rate hasn't changed, how many pounds will she get back once she changes her money back over? So pause the video again now and work this out. So in this topic, we're going to be learning about exchange rate calculations, and then also the impact of the exchange rate on international competition and importers and exporters. So please pause this video now and write the headings down as well as these learning objectives. So let's start with what is an exchange rate? So it is the price of one currency in terms of another. For example, one pound to one dollar fifty. We can then break it down into two different terms. An increase in the value of currency is called an appreciation, so it's worth more. So that same one pound is now a dollar sixty. And then the opposite we call depreciation, so that's when it's worth less. 
So one pound is now a dollar forty. So we would say that the pound has depreciated. So these are two new words that you need to add to your word list or your flashcards. So appreciation and depreciation. Also exchange rate. So please stop the video and add these to your lists now. So now it's your turn to explore some other currencies. So firstly, in your books, write down five countries that you wish to visit. And then using this website, copy and paste it into your browser. Explore how much of that currency you would get for 500 Qatari reals. And then which place is more affordable? But then you need to think about how much that dollar actually buys you in that same country. So as you can see here, 500 reals in New Zealand dollars, I would get $207.58. So it's almost, it's less than half, but that money would buy a different amount of things in New Zealand. So that, as you can see, the exchange rates are not equal for equal, and that buying power is also not equal in those other countries. So have a play and explore some other currencies that you are interested in. So applying this knowledge into the exam, you might be asked how to calculate the value of a product that has been exported to another country. So for example, in August 2018, one Malaysian ringgit was equal to 1691 Indian rupees. Okay, so as you can see, one to 16. A Malaysian producer of wooden tables retailing at 500 ringgits per table sells one table to an Indian furniture retailer. Calculate the price of the table in Indian rupees and show your working. So what we would do to answer this question is you would write 500 times 16.91. Step two, the answer. Okay, so that same table would be 8,455 Indian rupees and you'd get two marks for this. So one mark for the working, one mark for the answer. So please pause the video and write this example down. And now here's another example for you to practice. So what happens to a business if the, um, if the pound changes in value? So a UK business buys tinned tomatoes from Italy at 0 0.25 cent euros per tin. They buy a thousand of these per month and their exchange rate is one pound to 1.48 euros. So you need to figure out how much does it cost the firm each month at this exchange rate. So we want to look at how many pounds is this company paying to buy a thousand tinned tomato cans at 25 cents. So that's step one. Please pause the video, answer that question. Next, the pound depreciates against the euro. So the new exchange rate is from one pound to 1.26 euros. So it's now gone down. How much does it now cost the firm each month at this exchange rate? So is it more cheaper, is it more affordable, or has it cost the firm more? So write the answers down, pause the video, and maybe have a chat to your partner about your answers. So looking at imports and exports now, these are some new keywords that we are going to be looking at. So imports are goods or services that we buy from foreign producers. 
So they can be tangible or intangible. So for example, a car or a holiday. Exports are goods or services that we produce and sell to other countries. So they can again be visible or invisible, such as a car or a student paying to go to a British university. So pausing this video again now, adding these words to your word bank, imports and exports. Then completing the table below. So looking at the products, decide if they are imports or exports. Please copy this table down in your books as well as those definitions above. So when we're looking at how the exchange rate affects international competitiveness, we can use different acronyms. So this is um, thinking from the UK. So if we have a strong pound, that means that imports are cheaper and exports are dearer. Okay, so imports, we can buy things in for cheaper and exports, so sending something overseas, are dearer. So firms that import will be able to buy cheaper raw materials and finished goods. Firms that export will see less demand because they are more expensive. Then if the pound is weak, it's the opposite. Imports are dearer and exports are cheaper. So therefore there'll be a greater demand from overseas for UK goods and prices to make those goods will increase. And if the firm has a price and elastic product, so this means that demand, the quantity demanded doesn't change too much, it will be able to pass that cost to the customer. So what is your currency? So let's think about Qatari Rials. And if this is strong, what will happen to imports and exports? And if it is weak, what will happen to imports and exports? So pause the video, have a think about that. Then we're going to create a diagram to summarize this. So take this video link, please, and put it into your web browser. I'm going to look at how imports and exports affect business. Then you're going to create a tree diagram, such as the one shown. So for imports, what's going to happen? And then for exports, what's going to happen? So summarize the video into a diagram. So looking at how changes affect firms that trade over abroad, this is an example of um, a bottle of German beer costs one euro and a bottle of British beer costs one pound. If one pound equals one dollar equals one euro, it would cost an American dollar to buy the same. Okay, so everything's the equal at this point. If the pound was to appreciate by 10%, the exchange rate would now be one pound equals a dollar ten. Okay, so it's gone up, it's appreciated. And then the beer, the German beer would now cost the American one dollar, but they would need a dollar ten to buy the British beer. So what would happen to the demand for the British beer? Have a think about this example, have a chat with a partner, and then move on to the next slide. And now let's think about what's going to happen to demand if it went down. So if it depreciated by 10%, one pound was now 90 cents in both euros and dollars. What's going to happen to the demand? So 
So how these exchange rates affect businesses, uh, they, as you can see, it affects supply and demand. So the fluctuations in exchange rates create uncertainty because we don't know the prices of imports or exports and because of those changes it's hard for a business to plan too far in advance and know their supply and demand. So as you've seen the changes in exchange rates will have an impact on the competitiveness of the business because there's costs and revenues that are going to increase or decrease and the profit will also increase or decrease. So the business will adopt different strategies. What they could do is they only operate with one currency. So they only have business in Qatar and they don't have to worry about other currencies. They could then also move countries so they're still working with one currency. They could also implement these things called a forward contract. So this means agreeing in advance uh, about a fixed amount of goods and services for a fixed price. So that could be beneficial or worse off depending on what happens in the market. So please pause this video and summarize these notes down in your workbook. And congratulations, we've now finished the topic on exchange rate calculations and the impact. So going back to any parts of these videos that you need revision on, if you need to specifically look at how to do calculations, uh, please come and see me or seek advice through a peer in the class or in your textbook. But thank you and I'll see you next time.